Hey, how y'all doing? It's another episode of Truth Seeking Trucker. We're in our Father's Word, the book of Genesis, chapter 26. Let's begin with some prayer. Thank you, Father, for this blessed day. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear. May we put our spiritual glasses on and we won't seek your face. We want to see the things that you see. We want to bend towards you, Father, for only through your Son, Jesus Christ, can we even have this conversation. We love you, Father. We love your Son, Jesus. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Father, for just being you and being on the throne and being good and divine and pure. And may blessings come upon me and my family and also upon the listeners. May blessings of healing come upon them. Anyone who's suffering from demonic suppression or possession may they be someone there to set the captives free to train us in the battles that are to come father god anybody that has any back pain any cancer we rebuke it in the name of jesus christ anybody that has any sickness of any form rebuke it in the name of jesus christ physical spiritual mental we rebuke it in the name of jesus christ May healings come upon them. May the, the blessed hand of our Father be upon them. May the Holy Spirit blanket them in a comfort that only, with a peace beyond all understanding. And this we love and we thank you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. All right, let's get going. Genesis 26, let's begin. Verse 1, and there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went into Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. Verse 2, and the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I tell thee of. 3, so join in this land and I will be with thee and I will bless thee for unto thee and unto thy seed. I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Verse 4. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thee thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Verse 5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So let's stop right there. Why, why was Abraham blessed? What's that big question? Why? Because Abraham obeyed God's voice, kept his charge, his commandments, and his statutes, and his laws. So if all the obedience that came, he covered all angles and, uh, and ways that God wanted Abraham to be obedient. And that number was five. And the, the point of being at five is also the number of grace. So there are all forms of love right there. And uh, a lot of it's to keep us out of trouble. A lot of it's comforting. A lot of it's uh, the painful truth at times. But either way, God loves us wholly and completely and and wants the best for us. All right, verse 6, continuing. And Isaac dwelt in gear, so he listened and followed the father. 7, and the man of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, she is my sister. For they feared to say, she is my wife. Lee said, he, the man of the place, should kill me for Rebekah, because she was fair to look upon. Now we remember the story of Abraham and and uh, Sarah and Abraham did the same thing, saying that this is my sister. But in in retrospect, it was actually his half sister. So there was a component of truth in there. But with Isaac, I believe it was out of fear why he came with this. Maybe he tried to replicate um, the stories of, of maybe this father told him when he was growing up. Uh, and uh, why he did that, I don't know. But um, 
we know that uh, he thought it was the best way to handle the situation. But as we know, we're fallible beings, and, and sometimes we uh, our understanding is not the best understanding. But either way, let's push forward. Verse 8. And it came to pass when she had been there a long time that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out a window and saw and beheld. Behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah, his wife. He was caressing her in a way that was not of how a, a son would caress or, or a, um, a brother would caress his sister. It was in a way a, a husband would caress his wife. Verse uh, um, 9. And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, of a surety she is thy wife. And hast said thou, she is my sister. And Isaac said unto him, Because I said, least I die for her. So the king knew that what he told him wasn't the truth. And that the reason Isaac said he did this is because he thought he would kill her because of the the way men are. They're envious. And what they, you have and they like, if they can, they'll kill you, even kill you for it. So Isaac knew the wickedness in men's heart. Maybe he lacked the uh, faith in God that he would deliver him at this point and thought he had to lie. See, I don't always tell the truth and I have lied, so I'm considered a liar. But I've learned through the wisdom of the Bible is you can either tell the truth or you can delay the truth and find the best avenue to uh, and the best time to bring something out that needs to be un un unveiled um, in situations with the laws involved. You know, sometimes some things could sound incriminating and worse than they are. And when you're in an emotional state or it's a f something fresh, you can say things that you can't take back and everything is recorded. So it's best to uh, not speak on emotions, but on logic and intelligence. And that's what I mean. The truth will always prevail. But sometimes you can get tongue twisted because of emotional uh, crisis and uh, getting something really hairy. So that's just some wisdom on my side. Verse 10, and Abimelech said, what is this thou hast done unto us? One of the people might lightly have lined with thy wife, and thou shouldest have brought guiltiness upon us. 11, and Abimelech charged all his people, saying, he that toucheth this man or his wife surely shall be put to death. So the king has some morality in, it, in him, and, you know, one man's wife, is his wife and his wife alone. So he made sure that there wasn't uh, something that would be in a situation where, um, you know, they would they'd be, they'd have a, a men would would come after her and and fulfill what Isaac feared. All right, verse twelve. And Isaac sowed into the land. And received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. So we got to understand that the instrument of God's will, uh, we see it through uh, the king of King the Abimelech, and uh, that even though he may not be a believer in God, he uh, he is doing his will, and God's will will be done. So Isaac is being blessed everywhere he goes through his father's uh, promise, the Ab Abrahamic promise, right? For those five reasons. Why, what are they again? Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. That's the sign of grace. All right. 
verse 13. And a man, and the man waxed great or grew great and went from forward and grew until he became very great. He was blessed beyond recognition or expectation from uh, Abimelech and his uh, countrymen. 14, for he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and great store of servants and the Philistines envied him. Remember again in the prior chapter, right? We had a uh, one second okay sorry I just uh, had a little hiccup let's go ahead and start in verse 14 and he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and grew and great store of servants and the Philistines envied him okay so we need to understand that when people when men envy other men what comes next is jealousy and what comes next uh, violence sometimes uh, the con sometimes uh, uh, somebody who's not being truthful in the way that they uh, they're around them an entourage maybe even either way you're sur when men envy uh, you need to be on guard to find out their true motives right we live in a wicked world uh, we uh, we do we, as a Christian we are uh, about unity we're all about forgiveness, but we're warriors as well. We know when, when we see the uh, the con coming. So let's go ahead and continue. Verse uh, 15. For all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham, his father the Philistine had stopped them and filled them with earth. So they filled them with earth so that um, they could, uh, for whatever reason, to keep people away from their land, to monopolize the water. I don't know. Uh, it could be a number of reasons. But um, anytime water stopped, what, what is the good in that? Maybe to keep the population down to where they're the only um, people that uh, could survive out there. Verse 16, and Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. So Abimelech, you know, asked Isaac to go because uh, maybe they couldn't sustain him for the blessings that came upon him. We heard about this with uh, Abraham and Lot, where they, God blessed them so much, they had to split, right? And make a decision. Abraham was wise and Lot was foolish in what he chose he uses eyes to make him uh to uh bring his, uh discernment in his decision making same thing with esau and isaac verse uh 17 and isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of gear and dwelt there Eighteen and Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father, for the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham, and they called their names after the names by which his father had called them. Verse nineteen and Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of spring water. Twenty and the herdsmen of Gear did strive with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, "That water is ours," and he called the name of the well Isaac. Because they strove with them means contention. Verse 20. Well, what did Isaac do? He moved on along. Didn't fight. And 21. And they digged another well and strove for that also. And he called the name of it Sitna, which means hated. So uh, what did he do? He just moved on. Three. And he, and he removed from thence and digged another well. And from then they strove not, and he called the name of it Rehoboth, which means roomness. So they found their place. And he said, for now the Lord hath made room for us, and he shall be fruitful in this land. So they found rest in this area of place. 
And uh, before you see the envy of men, they watched, they knew that um, Isaac walked with a, a blessing from God and they wanted a prophet. And what did Isaac do? He didn't fight with them. He knew that God would 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 take care of him. You know, he might have had a hiccup earlier when he called Rebecca his wife, but, you know, he straightened up. All right. That sometimes we can't change the past, but we can change the way we we uh, we react or from through experience. Verse 23. And he went from thence to Beersheba. The well of the oath, as we know from uh, the previous study in Genesis. That is uh, reminding us that God keeps his promises. Men might not. Men may, may break their word. You know, I know I have broke my word in the past. I, I'm trying to make it a practice not to. And I've learned not to make promises to think things through before I, you know, want to help people. Yeah, I used to, when I first started as a Christian, I was so on fire to help people and, you know, do the right thing that I started um, spreading myself thin. And a couple of times I exhausted myself so much that I almost broke my promise. And I just learned from there that I eventually I'm not going to be able to keep my promise, but keep going the way I am. And, uh, and we went from there, and I learned to think things over and run it through the Lord before I make the, uh, promises. So, verse 24. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee, and I will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. 25. And he built an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants digged a well. Verse 26. Then Abimelech went to him from Gir and Ahusath, a one of his friends, and Hikol, the chief captain of his army. 27. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come ye to me, seeing ye hate me? I have sent me away from you. Isaac's basically saying, You've already sent me away. Why are you coming back? Because I know you you hate me, or you don't love us. You don't love you love us less. Twenty eight. And they said, We saw certainly that the Lord was with thee, and we said, Let there be now an oath betwixt or between us, even between us and thee, and let us make a covenant with thee. So they seen the blessings that come from. Uh, to Isaac, and maybe they thought it's probably best to befriend him. You know, if he has God blessing him the way he is, um, maybe we can learn from him. Maybe we can uh, understand him and how he is blessed the way he is. 29. That thou wilt do us no hurt as we have not touched thee, reminding them that, yes, we did send you away, but we did not hurt you. So we could... Uh, you know, maybe maybe kindle a little bit of that fear that's that's starting to ignite. Um, and as we have done unto thee nothing but good, and have sent thee away in peace, thou art now the blessed of the Lord. Verse thirty, and he made them a feast, and they did eat and drink. So they came together and um, and uh, came to a, a compromise, right? That's the way people should do uh, interact with each other in business. We don't always have to agree, but we always got to get along, you know. Verse 31, and they rose up betimes in the morning and swear one to another. And Isaac sent them away and they departed from him in peace. 32, and it came to pass the same day that Isaac's servants came and told him concerning the well which they had digged and said it to him, we have found water. 33, and he called it Sheba. Therefore, the name of the city is Beersheba unto this day. I believe that's the well of the oath as well. 
if that means. Verse 34. And Esau was 40 years old when he took his wife Judith, the daughter of Beryl, the Hittite, and Bashmath, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. 35. Which was a grief of mine unto Isaac and Rebekah. So, before we end this, we're going to find out why the grief was coming. All right. So, said, find out, do a little study about the Hittites. Uh, Strong's 2845, Chith, Archaeth, which is the son of Canaan, probably ancestor of the Hittite, descendants of Heath, which is uh, more likely an aborigine, one of the first descendants uh in Canaan. All right. So the first time the Hittites are mentioned is in oh yeah. I think Genesis fifteen and verse twenty. And but we'll read from starting eighteen for twenty one to context. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt into the great river of the river Euphrates. 19, the Kenites and the Kezazites and the Kendamites. 20, and the Hittites, there's our Hittites, and the Pharisites and the Rephams, which is important too, because that's the old word for giants, which means they healed. They were healers. That's why... Uh, they believe that um, um, David cut the head off Goliath because of, they could regenerate. They had that angel DNA, which caused them to heal faster than normal. So Rephaites and the Amorites, I believe, were big names. And in, in when it comes to the what went on, um, the Rephaims, 21, and the Amorites, there you go, and the Canaanites, and the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. So what we have here is not, maybe that all of them were, uh, uh, had the angel, fallen angel DNA uh, mixed in with the human, like in the Genesis 6 scenario. But they were so involved in idolatry, worshiping demon gods, that they made a head of possession and, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and by this, we have to look at, a bigger picture. All right. For the inheritance, the Jews had to stick with their own tribes. Right. And when you have these, uh, these, these parents, Isaac and Rebecca, they love their son Esau. And yes, Esau did lose his birthright to where his genealogy would, would be not the genealogy where our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was born through. He still had an inheritance to, uh, be a part of the tribe but with this inherit with this uh, marriage their descendants shall not be and have any inheritance and this is why i believe isaac and rebecca were so grieved because their son um, disobeyed god in a way that even their grandchildren were going to suffer and uh once you do that sometimes there's no going back we got to remember that christ had not been born yet so the when people had were possessed or or demonically um, oppressed um, these this is part of the of the whole big picture that Satan tries to do he tries to corrupt the gene the genetics of the descendants of Adam that's why Christ came to die for mankind not to die for half angels half humans or a 10% angel or any even point zero 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 one percent angel it came to die for mankind as the son of man and we go into deuteronomy 20 16 through 18 to get even more insight about this this is jumping up ahead a little bit and it reads but of the cities of these people which the lord thy god doth give thee for an inheritance thou shalt save alive nothing that brethren there should be nothing that should be left alive 17 but thou shalt utterly destroy them namely the hittites that's the first one on the list and when god puts the first one on the list there's a reason 
and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, which were um, occupying modern day Jerusalem, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. 18, that they teach you not to do after all their abominations, which they have done unto their gods. So should you sin against the Lord your God. So we see Esau, he's really went off the deep end. And yes, we, we, it's hard for us to see, um, you know, it's not just somebody marrying outside the race. This is a, the war between heaven and Satan, between God and Satan. And uh, this is what Satan's, one of his tactics is try to corrupt the genetics. And he was trying to do that to the, to the point so Jesus Christ could not be born. And uh, now with the, with the authority of, of the name of Jesus Christ, we can deliver people from these demonic uh, oppressions. And uh, we can minister to them to where they can turn from the ways that are abomination in the eyes of God. And this, I hope, uh, gave you some insight about this is not just, you know, two people of different races trying to get married and love each other. This was a lot bigger picture and and a lot bigger um, war and tactics and what is going on. So God bless you. Take care. and Have a great rest of your day.